fellow Dream Chasers, Kenzie Retro here. Uh, a bit of a departure from uh, what I've done uh, previously on my channel. Uh, well, I say somewhat of a departure because it's essentially the same thing as my Kingdom of Isolation series. Um, but yeah, um, new episode of WandaVision came out today, but uh, it's not just this episode we're going to be talking about. I we're also going to be talking about episodes one and two as well. So this is going to be a this is going to be a thing for the rest of the series. Every Friday, we're going to have a new One Division episode until the end of the series, and we're going to talk about what happened in that episode. And so yeah, uh, and I have my guest form the next episode of um, uh, Kingdom of Isolation, uh, which we're going to be talking about uh, Peter Pan. Uh, so we'll be we'll be recording that video uh, tomorrow. So hopefully, hopefully, shouldn't be too long. Hopefully, there shouldn't be too big a gap between getting this video out and getting uh, King of Isolation out. But nevertheless, uh, Marvel fanatic himself, it's Dan. Dan, welcome along. Oh, hello there. <laughs> so, how are we this uh, fine Friday like afternoon? Not too bad. Not too bad. I'm just happy the Wonder Vision's finally out. Yeah, uh, with everything that's been going on, at least it wasn't delayed. Yeah, God. Just, just like, just, very, we will see this. It is a, it is quite a big departure from um, what we've seen in the MCU uh, previously. This is the first TV series set in the MCU. Yeah. So. No, definitely. Yeah, it's, uh, a, it's the biggest departure from the uh, standard MCU. Um, yeah. I like the fact that they're going in this direction because after Avengers Endgame, um, there's not really any other way that you could go other than like, going into the multiverse because yeah. otherwise it start getting stale, start getting a bit boring. Um, so yeah. the fact that they're delving into more of like the multiverse side, doing what similar, what's happening similarly into in, like the CW with like Flashpoint and things like that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and the fact that they're finally actually doing the House of M storyline in the MCU timeline is just oh, hands down, yeah. blows me away. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was like, so some of this, some of this might just uh, go over my head because um, like, he, he's 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 more into like uh, like the yeah. deeper Marvel lore with the, with the comics and all that. I was like, me, I'm I'm just into oh, yeah. films and <laughs> TV show. But um, so anyway, shall we get started? Yes, let's go. And uh, and, let's go. And, 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 ju and just to be on the safe side, spoiler alerts in place. If you haven't watched any of these episodes yet, we are going to be going into spoiler territory. So yeah. I would highly recommend you watch the episodes first and then come back to this video so you can get our thoughts on each episode. Definitely. Episode episode one. Oh, my word. I mean... Yes. I mean, where do we even begin with episode one? I mean, I mean, no. black. I mean, black and it white. It started off black and white, and it's and it's like it's yeah. like a, an old school sitcom. Yes, it was a good start to sort of like get you into the sort of theme and tone of what the show was going for, because obviously the show was going for a very like nineteen fifties to nineteen nineties sort of sitcom style. Yeah. So the fact that like. Because I saw a lot of people complain on online saying that the first two episodes were very dull and very boring. It's like, well, no, Marvel's trying to do something completely different. And it's trying to set up this whole sitcom style. Like, you've got, for example, the Brady Bunch, the Dick Van Dyke show, uh, yeah. many multiple shows throughout the history of sitcoms. They're trying to do that. And it's something that's completely different to what they've been doing before. Um, the first episode I just thought was a very good sort of stepping point. It didn't yeah. really diverse from anything other than the sitcom sort of aspect. Um, because Marvel did say they wanted to try something completely different, which I think they've gone for with this style of television, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. So so it's a case of um so we're starting off with the um with the uh, the opening um sequence where you've got you've you've got your classic Marvel Studios logo, but oh wait, it turns yes. into black and white and then uh, they're, they're moving into this Wanda and Vision, who are play, portrayed brilliantly by Elizabeth Olsen and Paul Bettany. Paul Bettany. Um, yes. They and they're then. married and they are in a uh, they're in the they move they move to a small town, and it's yes. 
they get yeah, themselves I, in a bit of a pickle in the last episode, trying yeah. to remember what date it is, trying to work out what anniversary yeah. it is, which was really cool. Like, yeah, I like the fact that they played it off immediately, but at the same time, it's also very serious and very, yeah. very important. That's yeah. the other thing that I love about this show, is like yeah. the fact that it plays off really small things with the laughing tracks and things like that, but they're yeah. all so, so important yeah, to like the bigger aspect of the show. Yeah. And, and and the whole and the whole August the whole August twenty third thing, I mean I mean we, I mean yes. we, I mean we're we're led to we're led to assume that this takes place after Endgame. And yes, and believe and believe it or not, I believe it August believe it or not, folks, August twenty third, twenty twenty three does indeed fall on a Wednesday. Yes, <laughs> exactly, I mean, definitely. My my theory on this is um, because there was an after credit scene that was supposed to be used during uh, after Endgame, which was mm -hmm. going to set up this entire show. Um, yeah. So I don't know if you heard about it. Don't think, um, I, don't think it was. No. It was never used. Oh, well, it was completely cut. So basically, the after credit scene of Avengers Endgame was Wanda was supposed to go and retrieve Vision's body from S.W.O.R.D. headquarters. And oh, what she was going to do was try and like bring him back to life using magic and things like that. I reckon the reason why they can't remember is that was the date that she would have taken Vision, Vision's body and tried to like set up, oh. start creating this whole universe. That's my theory anyway. I think that's, I think that's the most logical choice is it takes, it takes, it takes place the same day as like the whole deleted after credit scene of Endgame was supposed to happen. That I reckon is, that was a direct tie into like that into straight into the series. That is very clever. I'm actually, I, I'm really glad I've actually got Dan on board with this. But um, that's actually, that's, yes. actually, oh, that's, actually, that's, yeah. actually, that's actually very, very clever. Which begs the question: How would she have got the Mind Stone? That's the thing. I'm not too sure. That's not really been explained. And I'm hoping that's I'm hoping there's an explanation that comes on later on in the series. Um, unless I don't know, unless it's really, really hard to tell. Like that's one thing that's really difficult to tell. Um, unless she's just sort of the whole thing is just created out of her mind, like vision isn't there. I've got a small small theory which I'll get into sort of later on about mm -hmm. the whole aspect of vision. Okay. Um, but we'll get into that now. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, but episode one was great. Yeah, so it was episode you, one was fantastic. Absolutely, yeah. I say, then, I say we've got. I say then, and then Vision um, manages to somewhat humanize himself. We do actually see the uh, robotic skin. Yeah. Uh, I say, he, I say, makes himself look like yeah. a human. <laughs> he he has he has a job, and then it, it's his boss, uh, Mister and Missus Hart. Um, yeah, that remind him that uh, that they're coming over for. Uh, for dinner that evening, and oh, Vision's just like, yeah. Vision's just like, ah, oh, I... that's what the day was. <laughs> yeah, but but me but meanwhile back at home, Wanda with yes. Wanda with her um with one of her neighbors. Oh boy! Yes. Oh <laughs> Jesus Christ! Just yeah, no, it's just it's classic sitcom <laughs> shenanigans. Definitely, definitely. Um. Yeah, the character of Agnes. Um, yeah, she's just. Oh, there's way more to her. She's. There's a lot more to her than meets the eye. Basically, um, her little neighbor isn't just her little neighbor. <laughs> it's a. Uh, it's a yeah. much bigger picture with her. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that I think will be revealed later on in the series. I think she's yeah. definitely twisting the realities within this universe. Yeah. But uh, then, it was like, I, think, I mean, I mean, I mean, it's difficult. It's it's difficult, really, to like go into like a lot of detail, given the fact that these episodes are like half an hour long. But um, it but is. But at the same time, the things they throw at you are sort of like they're small, but like I say, they're huge. Like they're absolutely massive. Yeah, like definitely. for example, the whole little Hydra logos and things like that that pop up with like the commercials. Yes. Dark Industries told stuff. On the back oh, of that yeah, toaster, yeah, so, believe it or not. Yeah, oh, I mean, I say because, yeah, because because that that toaster, that's the first, that's the first of the commercials that pop up throughout. Um, yes, I say, clearly, clearly, I say, you can definitely tell they're really going for the proper sitcom, um, 
experience that that like the, the oh, end of, like like about midway through the episode they that it go, it goes it goes to the commercial break and then once the commercials are over it's back it's back to the show so yes. it's no, really definitely. really clever however, how they, really clever how they've managed that yeah however those sitcom the commercials within the sitcoms are very very important um mm -hmm. for example the whole thing that this whole show is trying to set up this is a spoiler um from like the comics um yeah. is the fact that and that's what and that's why i put that's why i put the spoiler alert at the start folks exactly exactly and um, mephisto who's like a big big comic book, comic book villain in right. like the comics of like the scarlet witch of vision and the house of mm -hmm. m and um, mephisto is mm -hmm. like a huge villain in the marvel universe he's essentially marvel's equivalent of the devil or lucifer himself um, and if you look that there's loads of things that are sort of setting this up. Like on the toaster that you see the whole Stark Industries, um, if you flip the image, if you reverse it up, on the back of the toaster says 666. So you've got Stark oh Industries my toaster, word. 666. <laughs> That's essentially, yeah. And there's also like the other little Easter eggs, like in episode two with the commercial there with the Strucker watch, you've got Hydra. You've got so the Hydra logo on it. Exactly. So obviously with S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, starting up their new sort of sword enterprise, which is also another big, huge thing within this series. But that's not really, like, although it's an Easter egg, it's very, very clearly spotted with, like, Mon Monica Rambeau's character, who's, like, an agent of S.W.O.R.D. Mm -hmm. And, like, all the little logos you see and all the little Easter eggs and tidbits you see, um, they're sort of, like, a huge, huge part of it. Um but yeah, Mephisto, um, I'm not too sure if he was... Like, in Avengers 2012, um, mm -hmm. Mephisto, who's like a big, big villain in the comic books, um, what Disney... They did it for Disney+, Plus, but they took it away. But when um, Nick Fury's just like... Captain America's like, oh, you're trying to get me back in the world, and then Nick Fury passes him over the papers of the Tesseract, and he says, no, we're trying to save it. There's a little name in the small print. You have to always read the fine print. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, the whole the whole terms and conditions nonsense, <laughs> folks. Pretty much, that the tesseract was given to Shield by Mephisto, but it, Disney Plus, what well, they did it for later on, once it was sort of taken out of Paramount's hands and like they changed up, because originally in Phase One they were going to use Mephisto and like set him up as a villain, but they've left him till later. Um, they've altered it. Um, where Captain America's shield is over the, where Captain America's shoulder is over the fine prints. The fine prints not there anymore. It's just the pictures. Whereas before, in the original Blu-ray and DVD release, his shoulders oh. down. You can read the fine print, and the pistol's name is there. So they clearly set. They've clearly saved him and focused on Thanos through phases one to three, and left him to do till phase four. Um, so yeah, he's like he's he's a big threat, and I think he's going to be set up either at the end of this series or throughout Spider-Man 3 to lead into this new sort of Doctor Strange trilogy, to, so to speak, because that's what um, essentially is, is you've got like one division, then you've got Spider-Man 3, then it's like Doctor Strange, so it's like the Doctor Strange quadrilogy if you count the first one. <laughs> yeah. I mean, as, it, as, it, as it with Spider-Man 3, Spider 3, I am, as I, I really, oh, yeah. really, really hope, fingers Very crossed, excited. fingers crossed, oh, touch wood, that that we actually get to see this at a midnight screening, and I really want to get a Spider-Man suit for the occasion. Oh, me too. I'd, I, me too. I'd love that to happen. I don't know if it will happen this year. They've already started delaying films again. Like uh, Morbius has been delayed till twenty twenty two. We just had we delayed till delayed till October. October. Now. Yeah. So I think it's the same case as last year. Without a doubt, things will probably get delayed again. But I'd like yeah. to see Spider-Man three this year. I really yeah. want to see it this year. Because, 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 like, because I mean, because I mean, let's put it this way: sold out midnight screenings. I oh mean, yeah. I, I mean, I mean, let let's just put it this way: <laughs> I've seen this come up numerous times on social media over the last month month or so. We're still we're still waiting on our first Spider-Man three trailer, by the way, folks. And and you can guarantee we are. You can guarantee I'm going oh, to be doing a reaction to it. But uh, the thing is, I think. Mm -hmm. The thing is, um, the final fight scene, Tom Holland almost out for the count. Then you hear Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man theme. 
he swings in and I just want everyone to go absolutely bananas when that happens. Because I think I think it's all but confirmed at this point that when, oh, yeah. that Maguire and Garfield are gonna turn up at some point. But oh, I, th- I, ju- I just want to hear that Toby Maguire Spider-Man theme. Because I mean, that was that was part of my childhood. Seven-year-old me hearing that for the first time. That's why I love Spider-Man. See, the thing is, I have a small theory. I don't know if it'll be right. They might not do it. They might have them in the film. They might have them as like a big part of the last fight. However, what I think they're going to do is save them for an after credit scene because Toby's supposed to be coming into Doctor Strange into the Multiverse of Madness 2 as well. Um, so like, I'm wondering if what's going to happen is it'll be an after credit scene with those two. And that, um, and that could be where than, the Toby Maguire yeah. thing comes into play. Yeah, because Kevin Feige did turn around and say that, like, don't believe all the rumors that you're hearing. Some are some are true, some are not. So I'm wondering if it's partly true that they're going to come back in, but it might be in like an after credit scene where like the portals are possibly opening up in their universes, and they look up and like similar to Spider Verse, they get sort of like dragged into these portals, and that. Mm boom cuts to black where you see like andrews garfield sort of spider-man swinging about and toby Maguire's spider-man swinging about then a cut a panel straight and then have them both looking up and then both getting sucked up and then cut to black i that's my idea of how an after credit scene is gonna go down Ooh. it'll be like a split comic book panel with both of them looking up and being dragged in from their universes to the multiverse so to speak that I can get. Don't know that, if it will happen. If it does, don't know if it will. But if it does, you've heard it. I can get on board with. Literally. I can get on board with this. Yeah, like I say, I think Spider-Man Three's already got so much going on. It's got so much of a plot. Obviously, I think Craven the Hunter is going to be in there. They're trying to do the whole Sinister Six setup as well, and I think a couple of their villains are going to be in. I've got a feeling like Jamie Fox is confirmed. And Alfred Molina is also confirmed. So I've got a feeling the villains will Doc definitely and Electro. take place. So, in the film. so they're going to be like, definitely. I would imagine they're going to be like the two main villains for this Spider Man 3. Yeah. I, th- well, I don't know. I think Craven the Hunt is going to be the main villain. I've got, I've got a feeling it'll, they'll be doing Craven's Last Hunt, the storyline for that. But I think they'll bring them in at the end. I've got a feeling they'll bring them, the villains, in at the end. And then they might just bring, like, Toby and Andrew in at, like, at the end as well. But I've got a feeling they're saving them till the after credit scene. I've got a feeling that'll be the next big one. Because that's what the big after credit scene was from Far From Home. So... Oh, I've yeah. Got, you know, but, come on. J.K. J. Simmons, though, that was just... Oh, that was brilliant. And oh, yeah, definitely. I, I actually... Rem- I actually vividly remember saying after that scene ended, I was just like, now I want to see what happens in Spider-Man 3. The thing is, is that actually Toby's J.K. Simmons, J. Jonah Jameson? Or is that the multiverse version of him? We'll, we'll give it a fact. Holland's universe, which means that the J. Jonah Jameson, well, the, the real J. Jonah Jameson will still exist within Toby's universe. But this is like the multi first version of J. Jonah from that universe. If that makes sense. I mean, I, <laughs> so, I, I, I mean, the multiverse is very. I, 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 totally, I totally understand where you're coming from there. I mean, I mean, the fact that they actually got J.K. Simmons to do that scene and. The, the, oh, the, yeah. screen, the screen I was in for the midnight showing, it was just, they just erupted into applause because it was, I mean, oh, yeah. that, is, that is great Re- fan that, service. Thing went wild as well. it was great. It was absolutely great. Oh, uh, yeah. But no, but, um, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how One Division ties into Spider Man 3. Yeah. Like how it's going to set up. How it's going to set up Spider-Man 3 and how that's going to lead into that film. Um, Hans, I've got a feeling by the end of this series, we're going to see Wonder with her like full powers going all out, screwing up the multiverse like mad. Because Wonder is the most powerful Avenger. And like genuinely, she's very, very powerful, way more powerful than people give her credit for. If Definitely. you read the House of M storyline and like. If you read like all the different comics, you'll see just truly how, how powerful she can be. Mm-hmm. She becomes like, I mean, a slight tease of that was in Avengers Endgame, where like Wanda was like one of the only 
Avengers to really take down Thanos and actually weaken him. Oh, like, if you oh, remember yeah, in Endgame, the final battle sequence, yeah. comes down, and he's just like, I don't even know who you are. And she's like, you will. And then, bam, and then she's Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, that that, like, that was really goodness. cool. Yeah. Yeah, but they didn't really do anything after that, which is good. Like, I think it's sort of like seed teasing yeah. um, how powerful One Division will become. Yeah. So, yeah. But, oh, I'm only excited. <laughs> yeah. I was like, we, we, we've got a little bit sidetracked, folks. So let, let's try, let's try yes. and... Let's try and get back on to track, back on track with One Division. Right, so, the end of episode one. Yeah. So they 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 have they have the dinner party and uh, yeah. Mr. Hart uh, ends up almost choking on a whole strawberry. How he manages that is beyond me. It's um, but it turns out <laughs> but, it turns, but it turns out what they've actually made is they ended up making uh, an all day breakfast as the dinner. Yes. Yeah. Oh, cool. Love it. And and, and the, yeah, way, no. the, the ways that Vision and Wanda try and keep the hearts entertained while they're trying to get the yeah. game made, it's, it's just it's absolutely brilliant. Oh, it's great, honestly. It's yeah. so good. That's surely down to just how good, how good of an actor Paul Bettany is. And same, yeah. same with Elizabeth Olsen. Like, they're really shining this show. Which is good because they're great in the films, but you never really see that. The focus is mainly on, like, the main Avengers, like Robert Downey Jr., Chris Evans. Like, they're acting. Yeah. It's great. But, like, Elizabeth Olsen and, like, Paul Bettany are fantastic as yeah. a vision and wonder. This is really giving them their, to sh- their time to shine. Yeah. In, in, the, in the same way that I'm pretty sure it's later this year that we're going to have the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Anthony Mackie and Sebastian Stan... They're gonna get. They're gonna get their chance to shine in that series. Yes. So, no. Definitely. Sebastian Stan and Anthony Mackie. They're fantastic. They've got mm-hmm. like they've got the sort of like Thelma and Louise style of like humor. I think like the sort of like Bonnie and Clyde style of like. Ah, but yes. I think that's what their show is going to be very similar to. It's going to be like Bonnie and Clyde, um, but it's going to be like a very road trip sort of like buddy style of show so it's, it's going to be really really good i'm looking forward to the falcon the soldier and yeah. obviously there'll be big things teased in that with like obviously i think sword from this will continue on into like the falcon and winter soldier as well yeah, and the fact know. that we've got uf who is like the imitated version of captain america yeah. um because he's not really like there's, there's a lot about him he's not a bad guy though he is a good guy but um it's basically just the government's show off version of Captain America, whereas obviously we all know that Captain America is actually the Falcon. Yeah. So, yeah, it'd be interesting to see that sort of power dynamic play out in that. Yeah. Then, um, so, 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 dinner party ends up being a success, success, and Mr. Hart tells Vision, uh, see you on Monday. Uh, we'll talk about that promotion. And, yeah. And then, and then at the very end of the episode, and this is before this is before we get mm-hmm. into the credits, you actually see somebody I'm assuming watching from Shield headquarters or whatever. Yes, they're watching this show on an old on an old school TV set. Yes, I I reckon um, that character obviously because um, Kat Dennings is returning as Darcy Lewis from Thor and Thor the Dark World. Um, she's coming back to probably be like an agent of S.W.O.R.D. Um, that's her that's watching the show. It'll be either be Darcy Lewis or Jimmy Woo. Um, Jimmy Woo's from Ant-Man and the Wasp, who was like dealing with yeah. Ant-Man and he's like, you're grounded sort of thing. I reckon because he's back to this show as well. Like they brought back quite a few like sort of forgettable characters, um, which is good. Like it's giving them their time to shine again. Um, yeah. So yeah, I reckon like it's either one of those agents that's watching that's actually watching the TV show. Yeah. So, so yeah. So the uh so next episode we head into the night. Mm-hmm. So next episode entitled Don't Touch That Dial, which is um but, yes. uh, which which is definitely very appro- very appropriate if, if you're like watching if you're like watching a game show, for instance, uh, want to find out how he gets yeah. the- Want to find out how he gets on? Don't touch that dial. We'll be right back after the commercials. Oh, something along those lines. Love that. I think, I think, Here, just... buy this Strucker watch. Yeah. Buy this Baron Von Strucker watch. <laughs> Produced by Hydra. 
god. Yeah. So, but it's so we, I, I would genuinely yeah. buy that watch, by the way. I would okay. actually buy that watch. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I mean, just, like, I need that in my life. Just, just for the Hydra logo? Yeah, absolutely. But, um, oh so the, um, so the first episode was like set in like the, the 50s. This one set in yeah. like set in the 60s. And the, the opening, the opening titles for this episode on this occasion pay homage to Bewitched. Yeah, one division. <laughs> oh, I love it. Yeah. This guy is so good. Yeah. It's like the perfect sort of sitcom to sort of relate this sort of series to. It was like they really, in my opinion, like they really couldn't have done any other sitcom other than Bewitched because Wonder and Vision have a very kind of Bewitched style relationship. Obviously, Scarlet Witch having like all these pairs similar to like the character from Bewitched and their like, sort of like relationship between Vision and herself. Yeah. Uh, so, so with so with this episode, folks, we um, it the right. Bear with me, folks. Um. With this episode, Wanda and Vision are rehearsing at home for a talent show to uh, to raise money for, yeah. uh, uh, for uh, a school, I think it is. I can't remember the name of the charity, but yeah, I remember they were raising money for something. Yeah. I think it was for the children. That was it, because children, like... That's what it was. The whole tagline of for the children was like a very big sort of like part of that episode. So... Yeah. Yeah. However, that is also an Easter egg for something bigger to come throughout the series as well. That's a very, very, very big Easter egg. Yeah. Very big. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sure thing. But of course we won't. But of course we won't find out what it's referring to until later on in the series. Uh, yeah, they're starting to gradually. I, I'm hoping that they're going to do what I think they're going to do. I'm hoping that Marvel are actually going to go down the route and do the dark this dark story, like, this story is way darker. So, like, um, you wanted me to sort of explain about the whole for the children thing and, like, wonders and visions kids? Which ties you into... Do you want, which, what which, you want? T- which ties into episode three, folks? Ties into episode three. Which does tie into episode three. But, um, yeah. but Right, yeah. once we've spoken about episode three, I'll get into... The whole spoiler territory from the comics, which is what this is, this show is likely to yeah. lead up to. Yeah, because then. Um, yeah, but ep- episode, two, yeah. episode two, talent show, yeah, and it's um, th- th- there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of racket going on outside, and everyone's just and uh, Vision mm-hmm. and Wonder just like what is going on out there, and then but it just the start of the episode, um, joins the beds together and uh, they get down to business. And we'll just yes. and we'll and we'll oh, just no, leave no. it at that. We'll just leave it at that. <laughs> yes. No, yeah. That that was that that was truly funny. I was like, oh yeah. god. <laughs> it was like Marvel, you dirty buggers. <laughs> yeah. I, I know. Uh, I, I, I mean, I mean, I mean, yes. I mean, I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, yes. Ki- I mean, I mean, dare I say, kids these days are going to be a little bit more clued in with this sort of stuff now compared oh, to compared to us. With all those um, yeah. subtle innuendos, with all those uh, kids' films that we watched when yes. we were younger. Yes. But um, <laughs> they, they rehearse it for the talent show, and um, lo- and lo and behold, um, in to say, uh, so wonder wonders at the uh, wonders at the uh, country club where the talent show is going to be taking place. Um, yes. Tr- trying to fit in, and of co- and of course, this being this being a sitcom, it does not go to plan. Because um, no, because uh, the person that's the uh, the one that's in charge of the country club, can't, I can't put point a name on her at the moment. But um, she's like, it's just she's like, pay attention to what I am saying, and it's just oh mm-hmm. boy. But um, oh, definitely. There's also big. Sorry, there's also like a big Mephisto Easter egg at that scene as well. Mm-hmm. Like big Mephisto Easter egg is where um Catherine O'Han, I think that's I think that's her name is playing as Agnes. Um the country club sort yeah. of leader is just like, oh, the devil is this place. And then Agnes turns around and goes, That's not the only place he is. That's also another Mephisto Easter egg. So it is. Um, wow. Yeah, very small. Very, very small, very minuscule Easter egg. But she's just like, yeah, that's not the only place the devil is. It's like, ha ha, 
see yeah. what you're doing. Also, have brooch. If you look at her brooch, her brooch has like a lot of significance. Which you, like which you've you, got the Grim Reaper. Which again, which, which, which again, brooch. which again, somewhat ties into like the end of episode three. Yes, partly. Oh. Yes, yeah. And there's theories for that. Definitely theories Ooh. for that. Oh, I'm definitely but, definitely yeah. looking forward to hearing those. But um, let's say um, let's say uh, Vision uh, before the talent show starts. He's at this. He's at this uh, like. Uh, underground meeting or whatever it is, and then, and then he's yeah. like, um, so he, he doesn't eat food, and then corrects himself, doesn't eat food between meals, this that, and the other, and then ends up, and then ends up eating something Frank anyway, and then, and then the animation yeah. style, and then the animation like style of what, chewing gum. yeah, the, I see, I see the animation, the animation style there, it's it's akin, it's very similar to those um, those animated what you call it from. Um, I say, I say, not not just, I say, not just paying homage to be witch, but in the video game world, folks. Uh, pay, pay Fallout Four. Exactly. Yes. I say, yeah, I say it goes the, very say, full out. I say I like the same, that. the same animation style as the f- f- Fallout Four, and I'm, and I'm just, I say, just absolutely nice little brilliant. nod. I don't know if that, yeah, I don't know if that was an intentional nod, but if it was, like, I mean, I, ha- I mean, fa- fair, pl- fair play to them for that, but uh, then. And then the talent show happens, and uh, Vision is—he is, he is just wasted <laughs> on a piece of chewing gum of all things. <laughs> I, think just, I think food just makes him drunk. <laughs> yeah, I mean, dare I say, I would love to see this side of Vision more. Oh, definitely. This is what I mean. And like Vision, ha- Vision and Scarlet Witch haven't really had their time to shine up until now. I think they've been holding off on the characters to try and sort of set up this show and then give them their sort of like star quality. Yeah. Within the universe, but it's great. Honestly, they're fantastic. Also, yeah. um, the start of episode two with the opening sequence, like you were saying, the whole bit Witch thing. There's yeah. Easter eggs in that as well, which I'm just gonna throw out. So when you've got Vision, who's sort of like phased through like the desk if you look under the sort of shelf part or like on one of the shelves you've got like the grim reaper's helmet it looks like galactus's helmet but it's actually the grim reaper which also ties into like death and mephisto similar with the brooch on agnes's thing this is the whole like setup of mephisto they're doing it very sneakily but they're doing it well it's good you have to like really spot them honestly Massive, I say, massive kudos to like, massive kudos to to the team being able to put that together. I mean, especially, okay. especially the director. Oh yeah, oh yeah. definitely, director's done a very good job of this. Yeah, but um, but nevertheless, the talent the talent show more or less goes off without a uh, more yeah. or less goes off without a hitch. Uh, but um, oh yeah, <laughs> okay. but then, but then the end of the. Uh, and then they actually, and uh, because of how well received the uh, performance was, they actually got com- comedy performance of the year. Yes. Somehow. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. too fair. It was hilarious. It, definitely, yeah. <laughs> but then, then uh, end of the episode comes. They find out that Wanda is now expecting with child. Yeah. With, uh, yes. With 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 child. With child, uh, oh, <laughs> with children, oh, oh, children in this case, <laughs> but yeah, they um, but then they, but then they find out what the noise, what the noise was, and it turns mm-hmm. out it's a beekeeper coming out of the sewers, surrounded by bees. But is it? Present. But is it though? Huh. I, uh-huh. I see. I see. I see. I see your point. I see your point. Yes, basically, uh, with the beekeeper, it's an agent of sword. Um, you see him come out because if you look on the back of his beekeeper suit, you've got yeah. the sword logo, um, which we'll find out what sword is when come when coming into like later episodes. I know what sword is already, but that's just because I've read the comics. But to people yeah. who don't know who sword is, like I say, it's the equivalent. It's like Shield two point oh. They deal with more. You've got Shield who deals with more like Earth based threats. Um, sword deals with intergalactic threats and. Mm. Um, aliens and things like that um, and believe it or not in the comics for for a, for a bit of time uh, Captain Marvel Carol Danvers was like the director 
of sword um so she was actually the leader of like sword who went out and fought like the galactic threats and things like that and all the aliens so um they're very 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 involved in this show finally which is good and monica rambo as well who is a very 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 important character um yeah so, so <laughs> who that up in episode two? Yeah. So, so that ex so that explains as far as captain marvel's absence in infinity war is concerned that yes. explains what she said in Endgame. Yes. yes, because she was saying, oh, there's way bigger things than just this planet. Clearly, that I reckon that was the time when she was working for S.W.O.R.D. Um, I don't know if they'll go into that in Captain Marvel 2 and say, oh, this is where she was during Endgame, but I hope they don't because Endgame's happened. Yeah. It's done. Let's leave it. We've, let's move yeah. on. We had it in Far From Home. Let's yeah. move on from it, which yeah, is what we, one yeah, we, division feels like it's exactly, doing. We, we, Exactly. We don't need to work. We don't need to worry about. Um, we don't need to worry about the Infinity Saga anymore. I mean, the only the only film left to tie loose ends with now is Black Widow. That's the only one. Yes. That's, that's the only one that's left to tie up the loose ends in the Infinity Saga. Yeah. And then we can focus solely on the future of the MCU. Yes, definitely. No, which has once again, I reckon. Uh, I think Black Widow's been delayed again. <laughs> I, I don't think it's ever coming out. <laughs> wouldn't wouldn't surprise if it has. I mean, I mean, for all we know, it could end up it it could end up going straight to Disney Plus with uh, Premier Access or whatever. I think that's don't do. Oh no, no, don't suggest that, Fraser. Whatever you do, don't suggest the Premium Access. It's just have them just just release it. Just release it on Disney Plus. Re just, release it on release it on Disney Marvel's Plus. Marvel's making and, enough money. Yeah, I was making yeah, exact, enough money. Exactly, exactly. Release it on Disney Real Plus. Didn't and work. Then, yeah, I mean, I mean, that's. For, I mean, I mean, I mean, if anything, I would have rather waited until, um, I would have waited. I would have rather waited until it was free in December rather than paying yes. the paying the twenty thirty quid. To, they should have just done that. Like, I, there was no way. There was no way in hell I was ever gonna like pay 20 quid to watch yeah. Mulan. I was like, no way. Yeah. It's okay. like, I'm, I'm glad that they eventually released it for free, but they should have done that from the beginning. Yeah, exactly. Mark, Disney are making enough money. They they yeah. have enough money to I mean, fund, to yeah. take one loss, and people would have appreciated it more, probably. Yeah. I mean, it's a, I mean, a case of... I mean, I mean, I mean, with, I mean, with Soul, uh, Pixar's latest mm -hmm. film, that came out on Christmas... Yeah, they saw it straight for free. On, it was great. Came out on Christmas Day... And yes. and give give the give the uh, I say in Saul's case give Pixar a cut of the um, uh, the money that the the, the money that uh, Disney are getting from the subscription a cut of a cut of the um, subscription exactly um, revenue a cut exactly. of that, give that to Pixar do the same here with Black Widow <laughs> no exactly like just do the same with black widow i reckon because yeah. mulan really didn't work and i think it was like one of the worst rated films of like 2020 not yeah. too sure like don't quote me on it but i think it was one of the worst rated 2020 films not yeah. only because apparently a lot of people didn't like it for like the way it told the mulan story but like what disney did as well like i think that really really hurt the film big time yeah like they were like I mean oh like we're not going to release it to cinemas anymore, so let's just charge people thirty quid to like watch it yeah. at home. The, like, who does that? The biggest thing I was disappointed about when it came to Mulan was, I mean, I mean, the biggest thing I was disappointed with is the scene where she takes her dad's place in the army. I mean, I still have I haven't watched Mulan. Like, I I still haven't watched it. I've yet to watch it. But I know oh, you, the basic story of it. You've, you've not you've not seen the, you've not this you've not seen the remake, but you have seen the original, right? Yeah, like I, I know yeah. I know of the original. Yeah. And I know the, of the story. I mean, I mean, in the original, that is the that is probably the most important scene of the whole film. And oh, yeah. in, the, in the remake, I was just really let down by how it played out. Oh yeah, the, no, I can imagine. That was no, the definitely. one scene out of the whole film I was looking forward to. Yeah, no, definitely. No, I can imagine that being a bit of a letdown, but yeah. They should have just, like I say, I think if you're going to do a faithful Mulan, re Mulan remake, remake. Have, have the songs, have the characters, don't yeah. do it straight up exactly the same like they did with The Lion King. Yeah, um, I mean, that, that, was just, that was just lazy. Oh, God. I know, literally. Like, um, just change it up a little bit, but just a little bit. Still keep the songs in there. Yeah. For, 
still keeping like the characters like Mushu. <laughs> like when I heard that Mushu wasn't in it, but I yeah, I, 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 I can, I can actually, I can, I can actually say right now he is definitely not in in any capacity. I reckon what would have made that film, what would have made that film watchable, what would have brought more people was if they turned around and said, right, we've got an Eddie Murphy back as Mushu, and like had him do the voice of Mushu again. And they would have been like, oh, cool, they've kept the original voice actor. And then did the songs like I'll Make a Man Out of You and Reflection and like... I, I mean, I'll Make a Man Out of You. I mean, who who doesn't get pumped up every time they hear that? Exactly, exactly. But yeah, no. But yeah. back to one division. <laughs> of course. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so the end of the episode, basically the beekeeper comes out from the tunnel and yeah. like, obviously he's a member of S.W.O.R.D. and Wonder clearly recognises that something's wrong and she goes, no. And, and then just re- rewind. And then... Yeah. And to then, which we're all like, eh? <laughs> yeah. And then, and then lo and behold, as they, as they, they finish off with Wonder um, expecting. And yes. the whole set turns into colour. And then we head into the 1970s with this week's episode. Yes. Yes. It was very, very cool. <laughs> Um, also, like, I think, was it episode two that Monica Rambeau was introduced? Uh, Monica, um, Can't remember if it was episode two. I will. <sighs> can't, pin, can't pinpoint it offhand at the moment, but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely. She's, I'll definitely... Like, she's like Wanda's friend in the TV show. She's like Wanda's friend, pretty much. Oh, yeah. Um... Which we come to see in episode three as well. Yeah, so, so let me just double check. Let me just double check. Uh, I can remember. Yeah, because yeah, her, her first appearance comic, her first appearance comic book wise, was um, uh, issue sixteen of the uh, Amazing Spider-Man Annual, which was in nineteen eighty-two. Yes. And yes. she was she was introduced as the. I think it was se- Todd McFarlane. Yeah, it was the. It was Todd She was introduced as the second Captain Marvel. Yes, she is the second cap. She's the second Captain Marvel. Um, yeah. Spoilers, <laughs> but yeah, she's like an agent of sword. Um, but yeah, she's. I think she's introduced in the second episode. I'm pretty sure. Um, but yeah, this is a Monica Rambeau from the first Captain Marvel film. She's like the daughter of Carol Danvers' friend from like the. Uh, uh-huh. who was with her in the Air Force, but there's the little girl who's just like, oh, you should change up your colour of your suit, Captain Marvel. That is her. She's now grown up, and now she's working with, like, S.W.O.R.D., and uh, she's, like, an agent of S.W.O.R.D. pretty much, and yeah. she's essentially, from what I gathered from episode three, mm-hmm. she's, like, sort of, like, undercover in this sort of TV universe. She's, like, trying to work out what's going on with Wanda and... Mm-hmm what's happening to her, who's doing this all to her. And I think that's why she's placed in the world, because we'll get into it when we, once we go into the plot of episode three. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 the, so the opening credits this time around, we have the... Um, Brady Bunch. <laughs> yeah, in, the, the opening credits inspired by the Brady Bunch. And, oh, <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> the, the, oh I mean, the Marvel cast doing... Their take on it, the Marvel book. I mean, yes. that's that's brilliant. But uh, yeah, so this whole episode essentially centers around Wanda and Vision preparing for expensing, yeah, uh, preparing uh, preparing for uh, parenthood essentially. Yes, and <laughs> see, the the Doctor in this episode is just the fruit. Oh, the, yeah. the fruit analogy, though. It's, yes. It's actually, oh yeah, no, that was good. Yeah. The last one, honeydew. I thought of yeah. all the fruits he could have used, that was probably <laughs> that's probably the most clever one they could have used. Oh, definitely. The other thing that I loved about the doctor was when he was saying that he was going away for a break or going away for a visit, and he yeah, was just I mean, like, but you, yeah. "You can't get out of this small town," which is like. It, it, it's very like he's trying to like sort of say, "Oh, we can't get out of here. What is going on? We're trapped in this sitcom series." Yeah, um, like that's the whole point of him saying, "Oh, I'm trying to like leave, but we can't get out." It's like him and his wife were going for a vacation, but couldn't. I was like, yeah. "That's clever." 
that's really cool. Yeah. The vision's starting to become very, very much aware of... Well, he's not becoming very aware of what's going on, but he's becoming very aware that something's really wrong, which is what I really liked about this episode, is they, they took it up, they sort of amped it up a bit more and sort of started to get things running a bit quicker. Like, the first two episodes are great, don't get me wrong, but they're very, like... They're very... For people who aren't really fans of this kind of thing, it'd be I could see why it'd be hard for them to get into this sort of thing. Yeah. But like this episode really kicked up and it was like really trying to get the plot going, in my opinion. Because yeah. there's so much that happened in it. Yeah. And and this is and this is where the end of the this is where the end of the episode really kicks it into really kicks it into high gear. Cause after the format changes. The format change. Yeah. I love it. The format changes. Because after yeah, because after the um, because after they give after Wanda gives birth to uh, Tommy and Billy, who I say those were the names that Vision and Wanda were trying to debate on what yes. ha- uh, what they were going to call uh, their child, and it turns out they have twin boys. Yes, y- yes, who are extremely important. They're yeah. very, very important. That yeah. plot point is so important that people don't realise yeah. until until they get to the end of the series and they'll be like, oh. But this, the, the, they are the cause of the House of M storyline. They're, they're, they're the cause of like mm-hmm. this whole multiverse yeah. shifting. They're the cause of what's going to happen in Spider-Man's and mm-hmm. into the multiverse of madness. Yeah. They are, like, I don't know whether to spoil it, but yes, for it, as we're, too, we're doing spoilers already. Yeah. So, her two, the two boys that we see in episode three, um, are they go by the names Wiccan and Speed in the comics. One has the same powers as Wanda, which we see in episode three because the cult's changing and like the butterflies come into life and uh, the geese and all. Wanda's just like, I didn't know I was doing that. That's because it's not her. That's actually Wiccan within her. There you go. Within the womb. womb. That's how powerful. Um, Wiccan actually is. Wiccan's an extremely powerful character. Also a very powerful member of the Young Avengers. The Young Avengers, that's also a little Easter egg as well. Um, please, make the, the please, make that a te- please make that a please make that, please make the Young Avengers part of the MCU, guys. Please make oh, it happen. Without a doubt, without a doubt it'll be happening, because if you think about it, you've already got Ant-Man's daughter who's introduced in Endgame. You've also got Ty Simpkins, who shows up in like Tony Stark's funeral, who might become Iron Lad, possibly. Um, oh, oh that's, also... the, that's the kid that's in the Bloomin' Iron Man Iron trilogy. Man he's yeah. in Iron Man 3, who show, he's like the one that helps out Tony Stark. And Tony's yes, just like, There's a little that's lab the one. Thing. Yeah, where's he been? That's the thing, where has he been? Because why would they Why would they throw him in just randomly? Why would they include him in Tony Stark's funeral? Because he was yeah. only in one film. And fair enough, he helped Tony out. But how do how does Nick Fury know him? How do the how do the Avengers know him? How would they have gotten in contact with him? How is he? He's he's definitely dead. Exactly. That's exactly. not just a throwaway Easter egg. That's not yeah. just a throwaway Easter egg. That has to be in something. So, yeah. oh, sorry. I was about to say your camera. Cut. To, <laughs> I was about to say your camera cut out. Yeah, uh, it has um, to mean something. But um, we yeah. can speak basically what happens with them in this whole House of M storyline. And actually the like town is called the Town of M, which Wanda says, so clearly it is the House of M storyline. Mm-hmm. And what happens is very big spoiler, so if you don't want to hear turn away now. Uh, <coughs> but three, two, one. So Wanda's kids, she has them. Um, however, they die. They actually die in the comics, which leads Wanda to break reality this is what makes Wanda break it's like the kids the her children die wicked and speed get killed off and she loses it this is where she goes nope that's it <clears throat> multiverse of madness this is what this is the point that d- makes d- her d- reality d- break this this, this is, is what ha- steps up and she goes all out full out scarlet witch this, goes is, this, crazy. Is- this is what i want to happen in this show I want Wiccan and Speed to bloody die. <laughs> I want to see the multiverse folks. break. I want to see the multiverse break. I want that to be the cause of it. I want full out evil Wanda. I want yeah. evil Scarlet Witch. That, I I see that, that that's going to be interesting. Which could end. Which could. Which will very. Which could very well tie into the Multiverse of Madness sequel. Uh, Doctor Strange sequel, Multiverse of Madness. Mm-hmm. Yes, which like. 
huge, huge thing. I reckon um, what's happened is Wanda all sort of like, I reckon the whole thing with Mephisto is Wanda's been bargaining with the devil. Wanda's made a deal with the devil to have Vin- Vision alive in her own sort of perfect world, to have her own family. And Mephisto's like, right, well, you've been watching TV. This is what we can, this is what I'll do for you. And He's just like, right, I'll give you a certain amount of time. You can set up your own happy place with vision. You can have your children. You can have your happy your happy future. But I want you to do something for me. And Wonder, I reckon she's, she's like, happy and she's gotten what she's wanted, but I reckon that she's not done what she wanted for the devil. So the devil, Mephisto, is just like, no, nah, right, you've broken this bargain. You've broken this deal. Let's destroy your reality because you never stuck to the deal. So I reckon Mephisto kills off Wiccan in speed, which is going to make Wonder break, and that's what will make this whole universe explode. So it is. But yeah, but um, no, episode three as well, though, with Monica Rambo, where she mentions Pietro, and uh, yeah. okay. when she finds out about Wonder's powers, even though she probably already knew because she's working with Sword. Yeah, that's because like like cause she's. Um... Uh, because Monica Rambo, she's actually it's act she's actually known as Geraldine in the show. Yes, yes. goes by Geraldine, but it's actually Monica Rambo. Yeah, they're saying I say as, as, as soon as she mentions, I, I say, I say this was I say legit my reaction after that that big reveal. Yes, I say, as soon as as soon as as soon as uh, Geraldine mentioned that um, Pietro was killed by. Ultron, I'm just, I was just sitting there like, what the hell yep. is going on? Yep, blew her cover. She literally, she blew her cover. Yeah. I reckon, like, or, like, she's under the sort of, like, same sort of spell as, like, Wanda is um, under this whole sitcom thing, and she breaks out of it. Or she's just acting. She's just acting in this sitcom TV show. Yeah. She's an actor. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, no, like... Yeah, it's, that, that was pretty mad. So it was, it was pretty mad. Like I say, it really got the ball rolling on this. Yeah, and then, so, and then, and then the and then the episode and then the episode ends with Geraldine outside of Westview, and then she's surrounded by sword agents. Yeah, and 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 that and that's how the episode ends. And you've got Blumen. Daydream Believer of all the, of all the songs they could have cho- chosen. Yep. Daydream Believer at the end of the episode. Yeah, and, same song from the uh, trailer. Same song from the trailers. And, and I'm and I'm sitting here like, okay, I'm I'm really annoyed that I have to wait another week for the next episode. But Why not? my Why but not? my word, the way that I mean, if you ever wanted an example of how to get people on board for the next episode, there's a perfect cliffhanger to do it with. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, course, it's a, lot, a lot to come. There's yeah. a lot to come. And of course, the, com- the commercial in this episode, um, it was uh, Hydra-related. It's a Hydra, yeah, Hydra-related once again, and it's soap. Yep. Soap bath Hydra powder. Soap. Yeah, it's like soak away the bad memories or something like that. Like the, each of the taglines are also really important. Um, I can't remember if it's like soak away the bad memories or soak away the bad times and something like that. That's also related to the whole House of M storyline. Yeah, the whole town of M. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, there's a lot but, setting up a lot of big things. Yeah, that's it. That's it. I, I will say this: I am definitely looking forward to next week's episode. And uh, it, that's it. definitely, and, it's and, getting and going now. Yeah, and of. And of course, once we've both watched the episode, there's going to be a video with with uh, with our thoughts on the on the episode. And of course, oh, and yeah. of course, and of course, like we did, uh, like we did with this, we're, we're going to be going into spoiler territory because it's difficult oh, to yeah, talk about. It's it's to- to- it, it is difficult to talk about these uh, these sort of things without going into spoiler territory, which is one yeah. which is one of the reasons when I did my spoiler free Avengers Endgame review. The, um, yeah. The day that we, uh, the day that we uh, went to see it, I was like, yes. that, yeah. that was tough to keep spoiler free. But my word, yeah. I, I managed yeah. to pull it off. 
No, definitely. I couldn't even do a review for it because like, <laughs> I would have spoiled it and the video would have been an hour long. But yeah, there's like a lot of things that were like really important with this episode. Um, mm-hmm. And also, yeah. uh, there's like ooh, there's like things that are to come. So basically, um, what's recently been sort of confirmed uh, is that um, Quicksilver is going to be coming back and into this show. But it's yeah. not Quicksilver from the MCU. It's Quicksilver from Days of X Men. It's Evan Peters Quicksilver that is coming into this show, like, which is really interesting. It's like Quicksilver like it's from a, the X Men universe. Yeah, because House of M, like in the comics, it's got a very a big part of that. A big part of the plot is to do with mutants. Um, big huge part. It's a very like X Men storyline. Well, let's just say One Division is basically the first sort of X Men storyline that they've gone with. Um, but yeah, they're bringing in Evan Peters Quicksilver from Days of Future Past, which is interesting because I thought they were yeah. going to bring back in Aaron Taylor Johnson. Oh, the guy uh, that played Quicksilver in Apocalypse? No, the guy that played Quicksilver in Age of Ultron. Oh, him, yeah. Yes, so that's so, actually so, one but, brother. But okay. like, it's going to be yeah. interesting to see so, uh, Evan so, Peters, how he takes yeah. Quicksilver so, acts. Yeah, so, so I, was, I, was, I, was about to, I was about to say regarding him... Um, I like, he's the same guy that does Quicksilver in the other two um, X Men yes, films, Apocalypse, Apocalypse and Dark Peter Phoenix, and Dark Phoenix, which yeah. we don't really talk about. I actually forgot about that one. I actually <laughs> forgot that existed. Jesus. <laughs> well, that's there you go. That goes to show it. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. So uh, there we so there we go, folks. That us that's us gone through all three episodes of One Division so far. Next week we're going to go into episode four, and yes. and um, I say hopefully and hopefully in my case I'm actually in a bit more um, appropriate attire. I mean I'm still essentially I'm still essentially in my lockdown gear, onesie on, dressing gown on. Uh, it's 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 been my attire since it's been my attire essentially since lockdown started. So. Well, yeah. lockdown three essentially, yeah. But uh, yeah, but uh, but yeah, nevertheless. Um, so yeah, I uh, hope you guys uh, enjoyed that. If you did, hit the thumbs up. And if you want to be dream chasers like us, you can hit the subscribe button down at the bottom. Click the bell to join the dream chasers notification squad so you don't miss anything that we do on this uh, channel. And uh, and of course. And of course, like of course, like I said at the um, at the start, I'm going to have Dan back tomorrow, where yes. where we go through the latest episode of Kingdom of Isolation, uh, where we talk about uh, Peter Pan. I've got my notes. Yes. I've I've got my notes. I've got my scores. We just need to get the video done uh, tomorrow. Yeah. So, uh, as I, and um, and I've and I've got my good friend Michael McGoy from uh, Movies in Milk. He has been an absolute superstar getting the thumbnails for each of the episodes. So, so be sure to tune in. Be sure to tune in tomorrow, folks, where we talk about uh, uh, Peter Pan. So, in the meantime, in the meantime, we will see you guys again very soon. This is Kenzie Retro signing off. Thank you and good night. <laughs>